when things to move, we have to get it in the place of worship.
believer, we go out, we teach the word. But God says, I will never give you a life that you won't need me. And this has to evoke something in you where you have to be so weak. He knew this day would happen. He also knew I had a choice. 
to either be caught in my emotions or to allow me that moment and not to suffer from survivor's remorse, meaning that I shouldn't be marrying a child, the child should marry me. But God says, you have no right to think you can give or take life. Only thing you can do right now, Rico, is manage the middle. And in managing the middle comes circumstances, comes purging, comes happiness, comes joy. But feelings has nothing to do with it. So if you're caught up in your feelings, you're going to always be upset. But the faith walk continues on, meaning that I'm going to give you a moment, but don't say it. I'm going to give you a moment, but you got to forgive. I'm going to give you a moment, but you're going to have to sit down, and you're going to have to really have that conversation with me. Because see, after anything traumatic that happens in your life, the first emotion is blame. I'm going to blame somebody. Who did this? Why they do it? We ain't done nothing to nobody. We always separate. And that, if you notice, I kept saying, us, us. What was God in this? And if I can't blame somebody else, I'm going to blame myself. And he had to remind me, this ain't even about you. This has nothing to do with you. This has everything to do with me. Because this thorn and this issue on your side is making you straighten up. It's making you take an intentional look at where you are in your life. It's making you say, I have to be more intentional with my words, with my actions, with my prayer time, and studying. I have to be more intentional about life. Because see, I know what the promises of God are, yes and amen. But he also gave me another promise. And in this promise that I study, in Proverbs, just blew me away. And not just blew me away, it calmed me. It made me sit down and realize I have a plan now. But some of those business owners out there who always have to write stuff down, write this down. Proverbs 3. Uh, y'all look like y'all ready to. Y'all want this, don't you? Because when I got a hold of it, I had to have it. How many of us say I got to have it? I got to play with it for a few. Wait a minute. When I read Proverbs 3, I ain't going to tell you the verse yet because I know y'all ready. Look at how evil y'all are. Y'all already trying to pick it out. But when you see what I read and what God gave, gave to me on this, you're going to realize this is something like God speaking to an issue. But he said, Rico, I have a promise for you. If you do this, I will make everything okay in every area of your life. Meaning that regardless of what happens after today, go back to this promise and I can get you through it. No matter who comes at you, no matter what they say about you, no matter what you say about them, you shouldn't say anything about them other than bless you, Jesus, all that stuff. Changing your thought process, changing your mouth, changing your mindset, okay? But reading this lets you know there is a promise for you. Regardless of where you are in your life, there's a promise for you. And it's Proverbs 3, verse 5. Let me know when you get there. Trust. Say it with me. Trust. trust. Because when my pastor told me trust is what God gave him, as a mother, a woman, you know how overreactive, overdrawn, how extra we could be with our emotions. I had to write on it a little at a time, but I believed it, but I needed to understand it more. And Proverbs 5, he says, trust in the Lord. With how much? Oh. Not some. Oh. Not most. Oh. Not a little bit. Oh. But all your heart. Meaning that my belief factor in my heart has to be on 100. Regardless of what the circumstance looks like. It has to mean something. Trust. And lean not on who? 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 Type in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. And he shall direct your paths. And do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. 
and with first fruits of all your hand prints. Now I'm going to go back up to verse 3. And I wanted to talk about the life hack and the emotional injury that we have heard. When you are emotionally injured or failed relationship, failed marriage, failed opportunities, the first thing is going to affect is your eyes. It's going to affect how you see things. You get a blur. You get in a state of, I didn't see that coming. I didn't know this could possibly happen. I've done so much. And after it affects your eyes, it's going to your ears, meaning that you better be careful who you are with. Because when they say they plan for you, you need to make sure that prayer is P-A-R-P-R-A-Y, not P-R-E-Y. Because some people are waiting for your demise and they're waiting to say, I told you so, they're waiting to say something to you. But God says, your ears should be so focused to where the only thing you will allow yourself to hear is nothing but the word. To where you have to shield your ears. You have to shield your ears because people will say stuff and it will become attached to you. To where sticks and stones, y'all know, may break my bones, the words will not harm me. That's a lie. Because some of y'all are living out the words that were spoken of you a long time ago. Some of y'all have been labeled by people that are not you. Oh, he act just like, oh, he looked just like, no. Call him by the name that he has been given. If you don't refer me to anybody, compare me to anybody, let me be a kingdom child. I am a kingdom child. If it has nothing to do with kingdom, don't tell me, because you can take on the likelihood of someone that was not designed to be you. It's called identity theft. Meaning that it will make you do things that typically you wouldn't do, but because somebody put you to that and you've heard it so long your whole life, you take on an identity that doesn't belong to you. And then it's going to affect your emotions, meaning that we're going to show out. See, your affection of your emotions will determine your belief process. Meaning that, how did I get here? It's got to be qualified. When God says, I'm going to need you to have your moment, then I'm have, you're going to have to get back in faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because God says in Jeremiah 1, when he's talking to him, he said, what do you see? He says, I see an almond tree. And God lets him know, I watch over my word. Yeah. Meaning that I've already given you the vision. I've already told you what you need to do. And you're walking, and then life packs come. And you know what it does? With Jericho, with the wall, he said, I'll move it out the way. I'm going to tear it down. He told Moses, oh, get my people out of there. And what happens? The Red Sea, he said, I will part it for you. Meaning that I'm going to watch my word. I'm going to step back out, though. But I'm going to watch my word. So when two weeks happened, yes, two weeks ago, he says, move out the way. I'm stepping in. I got this. Because I'm going to watch my word. Because I told you I've already shown you what you have that's going to happen in your life. And what happens? Life has happened. And we get so caught up in our emotions when God says, I already knew this was going to happen. I'm going to need you to get it together, though. I'm going to step in and I'm going to hold you. I'm going to comfort you, but I'm going to need you to trust me. And he took me to Proverbs. So when you are in a situation in life and you don't understand what's going on, you have to do what? Trust. No, 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 you're not understanding. Trust is the only way. Meaning that if you don't understand it, God does. Meaning that I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to occur. You quoted the scripture. God, you said you knew everything God was formed in the womb. He said, well, then why are you acting like that? If you knew, I knew you. I knew this was going to happen. Yes, I knew you was going to get fired. Yes, I knew you was going to get a divorce. Yes, I knew you was going to go through whatever you've gone through. But guess what? Can I step back in? Because see, I've already watched that you had a praying grandmother. You had somebody that was on their knees professing over you like we do over our children and over our kids. So when we prayed for my son, he said, did you not think I heard you? Come on, come on, come on, Do you not understand? You're seeing the process. Like Job, what are you going to think? Are you going to go back and see? One thing, it's not about what God said, it's where he said it too. He said it in Proverbs. This is um, the part of the Bible is a section of wisdom literary. This is where you get your wisdom. This is where wisdom comes from. Meaning that when understanding is not there, wisdom is. Trust is there. And when he said that, I said, God, you are a covenant keeper to where I had to go in and say, I trust you. Jehovah Jireh. 
my provider. I called on what I needed the most. Jehovah Shalom. I had to get in my quiet place. And I had to go back and I had to say, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. He says, this is when you trust me. This is when silence is important. This is when I'm going to take you to a place that you don't want to go. But we're going to have to deal with it. Even though you've planted the seed, you've done all you can do, but you can't make it rain. And that's where I come in. I can make it rain. I can change some things. But you're going to have to what? Trust. It says trust. It says lean on your own understanding meaning that. When stuff happens in life, the first thing we want to do is take it back. I knew he wasn't no good. I knew she wasn't no good. Okay, you just took it off the table. Put it back on the table. And when you put it on the table, this is where trust comes in. You can't take it back. You have to practice the ministry of be quiet. That means that you can't say anything. Only thing you can do is get on your knees and say, God, this is the moment I need you to take that from my mouth. This is the moment I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. Give me something, send me a word, and he will do it. Because see, now you put yourself in the stupid seat. You put yourself in the seat where you say, God, I can't move. He said, good. Because see, one thing about taking a test, the teacher's never talking. It's always silence. But the beauty of it is, this is an open book. You can find the answers. And I needed answers to a question that I had. And he took me to Proverbs. He said, trust me. I spoke this to pastor. Now I'm going to let you dig a little deeper in it. He says, trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning that I can't be happy today and going off on somebody tomorrow. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean I get to pick and choose who I want to be cool with. It means I got to be cool with everybody on all terms, all the time. Regardless if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But let me free you right now. If somebody walks in this church right now, or walks in your job, or walks around you that make you uncomfortable, you're not ready. You're in your emotions. You can't be led by your emotions, because emotions make you do stuff you ain't got no business doing. Mm -hmm. If they can change your mood, they have, listen, too much control over you. That's control, that's emotional control. If they can change the atmosphere, your mood, your temper to everything, just by their presence, you're in trouble. But you know the good thing is, now you know, you'll do better, right? Once you understand something, you get to keep. And once you understand it, you're gonna have to say, I have to just own this feeling, and God help me on how to deal with it, because see, this is a form of unforgiveness. This is a form to where you can't move past this. You're asking God to do things, but you can't because you're holding his hand because unforgiveness is there because, see, everything in the heart has to be all him. It can't be I'm forgiving on Monday and Tuesday I'm cussing him out. But then Wednesday I want them to act like nothing happened. No, you're going to have to address it. And y'all know where I'm going in my two-part religion. <laughs> Tupac, verse 1 says, I want everyone to eat, but not at my table. Meaning that I want God's will for your life, but I will use the sermon on who sits at my table now. I get to choose that. And God says it right here. I am sticking with what the word says. Because when I totally trust on what God has told me, I feel better. Have you ever been so upset you called somebody? You know who to call. Because they're going to let you vent. Then you know you got to eventually call that believer. Hey, my girl, God is good. Yeah, he's, yeah. He is. But child, you know what he said to me today? Let me tell you how good God is. That's the kind of correction you need. The kind of make you say, you know what? I know who to call. And y'all know y'all got some of them. Let you vent for five minutes. I have a five-minute vent rule. After the five minutes, then we're going to have to. 
go to what God says. And sometimes I may not even have nothing to say to you. Other than you need to go pray. Now, my correction is what they should have done that anyway. So me telling them to go pray ain't going to mean nothing. They're going to call the next person. As soon as you hear the complaint, because it's a dumping thing. If, if you take on the responsibility, you become the source for their happiness. And when you don't respond, you mistreat you, then you get mad. No, you had nothing to do with it. You're part of the emotional hack. What you can say is start praying for them. So my, my father used to call me, and as soon as I started speaking my heavenly language, he would hang up. Because he was calling to tell me something. I already heard it because my sister didn't call me. My brother didn't call me. I already know what he's about to say. So when he would say, I would just start speaking in my heavenly language, he said, you know what, you just in there hang up the phone. Because I didn't want the jump in my system. Yeah. I didn't want the emotional roller coaster. So maybe that's a something, maybe that's a wisdom key for you. That when someone comes at you and you know you don't want to hear it, speak in heavenly language. Shabba, 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 shabba. <laughs> Shabba ranks. No, no. You come to Honda, I come to Honda. No, don't say that. But this is one of those things you have to keep your heart clean. I hope y'all getting something. Because yeah, I'm about to really dissect a little bit more of this verse. Number six is in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Meaning that if you listen to him, he's going to keep the path straight. He's not going to have you working in service. Have y'all have been so disarray that you're just going in circles, you don't know what you're saying, you don't know what you're doing. He said, but if you include me, I promise you, you don't have to go in that circle. It'll just be a straight line. It'll be seamless. It'll be effortless. Opportunities will just come to you. You're like, when it's come from? No, you're walking a straight path now. That means that opportunities has to find you. It will find you. Because see, now you're not doing it. He's doing it. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen. 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 Amen is a form of agreement. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, when it says trust in God can't, and you can't live on your own understanding, that means now it's not what God said. It's where he said it. And anybody that's trying or that is new in the body of Christ or that have just given their life to Christ, they're looking for wisdom. They're looking for how to do their day-to-day -day living. We always tell them to go to Proverbs because Proverbs is 31. 31. How many days are typically in a month? 31 or 30. You can get wisdom on how to deal with any. Y'all hear me? Say any area of your life. Any any area. Area. Say any area of your life. Any any area. Area. Even a life that you didn't think you were supposed to have. Amen. Just say it. Say even a life that I didn't think. No, some of y'all think y'all are really living a life. You really want to live a life. Trust God. Amen. Sometimes things just happen. And you trying to figure it out. And he says, see, that's why I needed you. Now you're going to have to come to me. Because I said before, any time or any life you have is totally dependent upon me. When you have decided to give your life to Christ, that means that when I get in a tough spot, it's not just to include me. He's already there. So my path will be straight. And number seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. Some of y'all puff y'all step up. Some of y'all think y'all know everything. Can you tell me how to be in New York and you've never been there? Can you tell me how to be married and you're not married? Huh? Can you tell me how to bake a cake and you don't even boil water? <laughs> Why do we put people in positions they're not qualified for and then we get mad when they can't give us what we need? I'm going to tell you why. Because we want to blame them. They want you to make decisions for them so in case it fails, they can come back and say, well, you said it. No, no, no. I didn't say that. You're going to have to totally trust God. I know this is a practical teaching, and that's where I am right now. I'm practical right now. I want things to be so simplistic in my life that whenever any hiccups, any hacks come in, I know I can go to God, and he's going to show me exactly what I need. I need to be taking a test all the time because one thing I've learned is that I don't have all the answers. At work, yes. In certain circles, yes. But in my own life, I didn't. And when I got to Texas and called, it reminded me that I had a support team, a support system, and I was so grateful for it, but they couldn't give me what I wanted. And that was my son back. And I was so grateful to everybody. But then God says, I can, if you trust me. You let his memory be in you. 
You do good by him. Because see now, you're needing to go where he's already. He's here. And he comforted me in knowing that. So whenever there is no understanding, there's always trust. And I wrote something down. Trusting God isn't the right thing to do, but it's the wise thing to do. Amen. That's what the book of Proverbs is about, being wise and knowing that how he does things is not how I do things. And y'all have heard pastors say this all the time, Isaiah 55, 8. Put that up for me. When you get that, say amen.
verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions mm -hmm. and with what? Verse of verse. all oh, your okay. increase. Not some. This is a good month. It's not a good month. It's not a good week. It says all your increase. Now, I'll tell you, honor is mentioned 147 times in the Bible. 147 times. And money is mentioned over 800 times. When God repeats himself constantly, that's important. He says, honor. So when I petition God, I already know what I had in ground. It was already in order. I've already petitioned him because I believe the New Foundation Church is 100% tithing church. Say it with me. 100% tithing church. You're going to say it until you believe it. And then your actions are going to follow it. But I got to teach it. And when he said that, I was like, oh my goodness. My honor comes from what I give because it's precious to me. We're about to send a child off to college. That means we're paying for his college. But some of the things that he needs, he's on scholarship, but he may need books. He's going to need food. And I trust that when I hand my money to whoever, what's going to happen? They're going to give me what I need. You don't give to a church, you give through a church. Amen. you got to understand that. That's a principle. Amen. We're going to teach that. When we're saying honor, that means, God, uh, this is the best that I have. And we've done a demonstration. If I'm walking, and, and you know, Minister Rio did a great job. He said, if I'm walking and I dropped, pretend this is a $100 bill, and I'm walking and somebody picks it up and hands it to me, he's not increasing me. He's giving me what's mine anyway. That's a time. You give him what belongs to him, and then you move his hand with the offering. Because it showed me, he talked about Solomon, how much he gave. How much he gave in his offering. Meaning that this is valuable to me, but I know it's going to do something in the kingdom. It has nothing. Y'all want to know what your purpose is? That's to serve. The purpose is to serve others. That's just the bottom line. You're here. You were placed here to serve. Are you serving? It says honor me with your first fruits, meaning that I need it first. And then if I get it first, then I can bless the rest of the night. That sounds like a good return on investment. How many business owners we got that believe in a return on investment? Or how about that you give somebody something you're expecting a return, right? Do you want a small return or a big return? Huh? So if I trust God with everything, I would do anything to make sure his kingdom is moving forward, but I'm trusting him with something that I hold sacred. And, I'm, and you know, the Lord took me to real estate. Y'all know I love real estate. Love it, love it, love it. The most important thing about real estate is a trust account. A trust account means that you're holding funds for somebody else for them to benefit from. Meaning I'm taking this from you in case you spend it. This is good faith showing that I will hold it until it's time of the sale and you benefit from it. Why? Because you're the one that possessed the house. It says a full heart, y'all. That's what the church is. We're a trust account. Until it's time when you need a petition, you're the beneficiary. That means that when you need a deposit, you know it's already there. It's already in the house. It's in the ground. It's a storehouse. It's already there. I'm honoring you guys. So when I'm going through something, I know you will honor me. Yeah. It's not that he needs you to put respect on his name. Yeah. Yeah. He don't need that. Right. He just wants obedience right. and trust. Right. Meaning that if it don't make sense to you, then you have to trust him. Where there is absence of understanding, there's always room for trust. As a matter of fact, trust does its first work when you don't understand. Amen. Trust is efficient. Let me just back it up for y'all religious people. That's your faith. Yeah. Meaning that I don't understand it. It has nothing to do with my feelings, but it has everything to do with my faith. Some of y'all going to need some water walking faith. Some of y'all just going to have to pick yourselves up and just brush yourself out and say, God, I trust you. Yes, I did it this way, but I'm trusting you now. Put me in line with somebody that's going to get me where I need to be. See, I can't play with y'all no more. <laughs> I'm not going to play with y'all no more. We're about that business. We're about the kingdom. We're about getting things done. I'm not just standing here telling you with us as the Lord. I'm living it. We are living it. It's not just words. This is part of my life. This is who I am. And I told God years ago, if you let me go out, I will come back and I will serve you and I will trust you. But he never told me. During that process, you will have a diagnosis that you don't understand. Your son's going to die. Things are going to occur, but will you still trust me? He reminded me of everything from three years old to 50. 50. And I said, yes, I trust you, Lord. 
And he's letting me know there are going to be other life hacks for when you continue to trust me. If you trust me this time, you won't have to worry. You're just going to walk a straight path. You're going to face it and say, my God says, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do it, above all the understanding, that I trust him. I know Hebrews 11.1 says, what? What does it What? That's right. That's your faith. You got to know scripture that you can stand on because you're going to need it. Just like we know those nurture rhymes, you better know a scripture that you can stand on. You start a business, you better have a business that has a scripture back into it. Because sometimes when it's not, when it's always in the red, you need to get in the black and you need something, you're going to say, but God, you said it, and this is the scripture that I'm standing on. A marriage, you need to build your own culture, meaning this is the scripture that I'm standing on. No, we're not talking. No, we're not understanding each other. But you said, I am the asset. I was presented to him. You've got to know who you are, and when you have confidence in knowing who you are, that means you trust what God has said about you. You don't care what people say about you. Say, no, you don't even have to say that. used to be me. It's already understood. God said, you ain't got to say nothing. You don't have to defend the word. Only thing I need you to do is obey it. If somebody comes to you and says, I knew this was going to happen, say, did you know what God was going to do? Did you know that? Flip it. Because some of y'all still going to acknowledge it. So if you're going to acknowledge it, acknowledge it with some words, okay? Amen. Acknowledge it with the word of God, what God says. Some of y'all feel like I have lived my whole life and I feel like I'm at a point where I don't know what I'm doing. And God says, now you trust me. I can take you to your next level. Some of y'all feel like I'm too old to go to school. He says, school has been open for I don't know how long and it has no age requirements. Do you understand? Some of us feel like I didn't have a baby. If I look in the word, it shows you women and they not just have babies. Do you understand? But you gotta trust him at his word. You have to trust him. Eve was not born a girlfriend, she was born a wife. Why are you acting like you're single and you need to mingle? No, your, your man is God. Do you understand? It's practical thinking, it's practical living. Are you living a life that you want someone to emulate, to copy? Since people have identity there, let them copy something that's in the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Give them something that's rewarding. Give them something that they can talk about. Let, the, let your lifestyle be the example that you want someone else's lifestyle to be. This is ministry, y'all. Y'all have seen ministry in the New Foundation Church. Y'all have seen the highs and lows, the breaking points, the high points. That's ministry. You've seen lives change. You've seen demons delivered out of people. That's ministry. It's not to come here and sit down and be cute. You do look cute. That's not it. But you need to have something in your mind. You need to have some wisdom that whenever you can't talk to me or talk to pastor, you can talk to God. And that should be your first choice anyway. Let him tell you something and let us confirm it. But go to him first. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us need to be, as I say, pull up your bootstraps and get in the word. Because I spoke on uh, Wednesday when I talked about the man who's beautiful. He was so busy laying out there for 38 years. I don't know how old you are. You've been laying at that pool waiting for somebody to do something. And he says, get up. Get up. You want to blame somebody for stepping over you and not pushing you in the pool? It's your purpose. You get up. You do what God has charged you to do. And stop blaming other people for your shortcomings because it's you. The only person you should ever be in competition with, and that's yourself. Amen. It comes a time when we just have to just face the mirror. And I face the mirror. Because I thought that if I could cover or take care, he said, you've done your part. Let me do mine. And for those who were not raised by their parents, let me go ahead and give you the revelation I got years ago. They were graced to get you here. Another person was graced to do it. Some of us have gone through a lot of traumatic things, and I'm not dispelling any of that or throwing it down, but God says, if you trust me, all that will be gone. Yes. All that, if you're believing me to do or move anything in your life, unforgiveness has to be handled. Yes. It's got to be dealt with. Y'all say these cute little prayers. Father, you're so good, and right? He said, that's right. That's right. But I want to talk about your nasty ways. Yes. I want to get to the root of the thing. I want to talk about what's really keep you going every day, that unforgiveness, that pride, that drama. I want to get with that. Because if you want me to do anything in your life, we got to deal with that mess. You've got to deal with it. This mess.
scripture says, trust in your heart with God, right? It says trust. It says trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning that everything that makes me me is trusting in God. Amen. Now, y'all have seen a book by Michelle Obama called Becoming. Becoming what? Do you understand? That's for everybody. Becoming. I am 50 years old and I'm becoming. That means I'm becoming better. In order for me to be better, I got to have a God for me. And I don't know about y'all, but this is a book that I can read, and this is the only book that can change me. Amen. This is the only book that can put stuff in my spirit that when I should be doing something, I'm letting him handle it. It may not look like I'm healed, but I'm healed. Do you understand? It may not look like I don't get it, but I get it. It may not look like I'm not moving up, but I'm moving up. This book says, I will do it. It has nothing to do, it doesn't say, Rico, this is the word of God for Rico. Say it, make it personal. This is the word of God for, say your name. This is the word of God for Jesus. Now say it like you mean it. This is the word of God for me. Now if I was to say, come on, pay and get $100 off, because everybody run up here. <laughs> and you be confident about it. It's something about when you have confidence. It's something about um, the word of God that can evoke something so deep inside of you that you know you can't be moved because God done said it, he done showed it to you. People trying to come and get you like, uh-uh. No, honey. That's what he said. This is what he said. And he meant what he said. Some of y'all got to the point where you cannot be unbreakable. There's some place you cannot be unshakable. There's some things that you have to go up and say, but God said. It looked like this, but God. I had a but God two weeks ago. And some of y'all need but God in your life right now. Some of y'all are surviving issues that should have killed you. But God says, I stepped in. Because I got to watch my word. My word does not say you go out right now. It doesn't say you're defeated right now. It says I'm stepping in. Yeah. And then when it's back on track, I'm going to step out because I got to watch yeah. my word. Yes. I got to gird you up to where when things occur and your faith is so strong, you look like don't let move you. Right. That's the place I want to be. Yeah. I want to be that. Did you see what just happened? No, I didn't. What happened? I will not acknowledge it. Because there are things that are going to occur. And when you, like I said, it, you got to block your ears. People will come and say stuff to you, and you're going to be like, no, I don't, I don't want to see that. Wow. Just stop and write this up, but God said it's going to be okay. Amen. Well, what happened if God said it's fine? Well, God told me that when you start putting God in, the conversations become very short. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> the conversations become very, very, very short. And you just got to trust him. Amen? Amen. Amen. I wrote something that I thought was so profound and I'm going to find it because I know it needs to be said. Say, Holy Spirit, help me find it. Holy Spirit, Spirit help me find it. We got to get some people this stuff. How many of y'all want y'all stuff back? Yes. How many of y'all need to get some stuff? Amen. Here it is. When you properly manage a biblical revelation, it promotes a behavior revolution. I accepted the biblical revelation and I'm about a biblical or behavior revolution, meaning that when things come up, I'm going to be like my son. No. That come up, no. I don't have to accept that. Do you understand? Just believe, no, I don't have to accept that. Something has evoked something in me. Right now, I feel like I should be in army gear with a pair of, what do they call those shoes? Boots? What do they call them? Combat boots. What do they call them? What combat boots? Because see, right now, I am burdened. I don't care how it looks. I am so grounded that when it starts to come, I'm going to say, okay, God, I trust you. Yeah. Okay, God, I trust you. Yeah. Okay, God, I trust you. Yeah. It's coming at me, but I'm trusting you. Yeah. It's coming this way, but I'm trusting you. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to give you a posture. Hey, nobody move. He's going to give you a posture. Because they're going to try and do some things. They understand. And I've said it before. We be celebrating over something that the devil thought he had. He said, I didn't send that to you. I said that to distract you. But since you want to be back, I'm coming this way. You better be mindful what you're celebrating. Do you understand? You better be mindful. Say, I'm mindful, I'm mindful. of what I celebrate. What I celebrate. Only, the word Only the word is what I'm going to be 
committed to. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Facebook, for joining us. Join us for Word on Wednesdays. That's at 7.30 p.m. Pastor Sam, we invite you to come out. We would love to see you. Thank you again.